Hey guys, my name is Christian LeBlanc and today I'm doing an entire video on Google Analytics. Just two days ago, I was actually invited directly by YouTube to join a Google Hangout where I actually got to get one-on-one -on -one insider information on Google Analytics, Google Trends, and other tools that might be helpful to content creators. So make sure to strap your seatbelts because this is going to be a good video. Okay, before we actually jump into Google Analytics, I actually want to take a look at Google Trends and I think this is an incredible tool. So if you come to the Google Trends homepage, you can actually see here are the top 10 trending things. For this example, I think I'll put myself in the shoes of my girlfriend. She actually makes YouTube fashion videos, so she often calls her videos lookbooks. So if I search lookbook, which is commonly used by these YouTube fashion girls, so we can see here that pretty much since the beginning of time, lookbook has seen a steady increase until it hit 2012. After 2012, there was a steady decline that has gone on pretty much to present. So that's telling me that essentially the word lookbook might be outdated or it might not be that effective. But lookbook is not the only way to call it. I can also say outfit ideas. And right away we can see the outfit ideas, although it didn't always keep up with lookbooks, it has gained popularity and is actually now looking like it's just about to surpass it. So let's shorten the period of time just so we can get a more accurate read on this. So I'm going to set a custom time just over two years so we can get a bit of a closer snapshot of what's going on. In 2014, you could easily say that lookbooks was probably a better idea than outfit ideas, but we can see here the lines are converging until the point where outfit ideas is actually becoming more popular. Now it's pretty minimal and you could argue it actually wouldn't even matter, but imagine if the line differences were more extreme. This is a great way to figure out how are you going to title your videos and which will give you the best chance of being found on YouTube or on Google. Now we can scroll down a little bit and we actually get more information. So if you look here, Lookbook is actually the most popular in Singapore, the Philippines, Hong Kong, Morocco, Netherlands, and so on. You can click right here and get more information on where's the outfit ideas being searched from. Now I see Philippines, South Africa, United States, Ireland, UK. So this is another thing that should be taken into account. Who is your audience and who are you trying to target? If you're targeting Singapore, definitely use the word lookbook because it seems like it's very commonly used in Singapore. So now you want to scroll down and down here you can get a little bit more information. What are actual lookbook words that are trending or rising? So if I click here, the rising is lookbook 2015, lookbook 2014. These are words that are actually being used and being used more and more. So they might be coming into trend. Let's click on outfit ideas. And it looks like outfit ideas for 2015 seems to be the most trending and rising out of all the outfit idea tags. Now if I put myself in the shoes of a fashion YouTuber starting from the top, I can see here that maybe outfit ideas would be a better title than lookbook. I can see that if I use outfit ideas, I'll have a better chance of capturing these audiences and some great ideas might be within this category of rising. So if I click on the rising, I see here that flannels seem to be making a comeback. 90s outfit ideas are making a comeback and a rise. They're up 160% over the past two years. One last thing that I'd suggest is why don't we try even a shorter time frame. Let's do the past 90 days. Now if we do the past 90 days, you'll see some of the results will change. It seems like in the past 90 days, lookbook is being more commonly used in Canada, United Kingdom, and France. Outfit ideas somehow is still being swept by the Philippines. Now where it might get interesting is if you shorten the time frame to 90 days and come down here. If I click on lookbooks, I can see here that lookbook 2016 is seeing a bit of a surge. So this might be a great title if you're creating a lookbook. So let's say we decided we're going to call our video outfit ideas. Let's see what kind of outfit ideas are rising right now. Well, it seems Valentine's Day outfits are very valuable. Outfit ideas for 2016, Christmas, Christmas, winter, winter. We can already see here that there is a huge demand for winter and Christmas outfits. So it might be a bit late to be posting it now, but when the season comes around next year, maybe if you get your video up three to two months in advance, you'll be able to ride the rising trend and get the most views on your videos. I've already spent too much time on Google Trends, so let's move on. All right, guys, I just wanted to start with a quick introduction to what Google Analytics is and how it works. And from there, we'll get into a little bit more of the advanced stuff. To start, I'm showing you guys my personal analytics, and I've got the estimated ad revenue blocked out just because I'm going to keep that part private. As far as YouTube's concerned, the biggest indicator of how well a video or channel is doing is watch time. And so if I go here, I can actually hover over this figure, and I've got almost 2.2 million minutes viewed 
every 28 days. And if I actually hover over it, I can see that there's been a 64% increase over the last 28 days. So that's a great, great thing to see. The average view duration of one of my videos is four minutes and four seconds, and that's about a 15% increase over last month. So again, that's great because YouTube decides how well a video is doing based on how long are people actually watching it, not just how many views it has is doing. So we can see here that I had a huge spike on this one day on the 13th of January. And I think that's when my How to Travel the Philippines video went viral. So that led to a lot more views than normal. So even though it looks like things are going downhill, that's actually not the truth. It's just that I had one extremely knockout day where I really did an amazing job at getting views on my videos. But you can't sustain that necessarily. And so uh, things kind of dropped down to a bit more normal again. If there's one thing you should take away from this video, it's how can I increase my audience retention? One of the things I recommend doing is taking a look at your videos and seeing where do I see extremely large drop-offs in audience retention. So for example, in this video here, and this might not this doesn't exactly count, but I can see there's a fairly large drop. We go from having 42% of people watching to only 24%. Now I'll show you why that happened. So as we can see here, I'm just vlogging, but then we had a glitch. So in that span of roughly 15 seconds, the camera froze, something happened to the upload, I'm not too sure. Things get better though, and boom. All of a sudden, our audience retention starts jumping back up. If we go from 24 to 45, it's not that people magically reappear, it's that they decide to skip ahead in the video. So what I'm trying to say is, I recommend that you look at yourself in your videos. You know, Do you have spots in your videos that are dry, that people are leaving? And this is often... This can frequently happen in places like introductions when people choose to do lengthy introductions and you know viewers like to get to the point quickly. So if you're doing a DIY where you're showing people how to make uh, a costume, you know, don't take 10 minutes to introduce yourself because you'll have no one to actually watch the video. Get to the point fairly quickly because you will lose your audience. So let's start by selecting a video. As we can see here, this is a chart of how many people are still watching after a certain amount of time. Now, by about the one minute mark, I've already lost 30% of the audience. Is that a negative reflection of my video? Maybe, but not necessarily because people just have such short attention spans. You can be guaranteed that at least 20% of the people who clicked on your video will leave within the first 10 seconds, even if they see what they want. And you can actually answer that question, how well are you really doing, by clicking here on the relative audience retention. Now, this is basically a comparison rather than just a report. Now I can see that at the one minute mark, remember, I had lost 30% of my audience, but according to YouTube, that's still above average. If we move further into the video, well, at about the eight minute mark, we're dropping just below average. And by the time my video concludes, we're below average. So that's not to be taken personally, that's just the nature of how things are, but you can learn so much from it. So I can actually go, let's see where I started dropping off. So if I click here, boom. It now shows me exactly where in the video that started to happen. So where did we start losing people? So if we click where I started to drop below average, we can actually see that this is towards the end of my video and this is where I start concluding in my video. I actually verbally say in the video, thanks for watching my video guys, blah, blah, blah. And I start talking off about a topic that they didn't necessarily click for. And so all of a sudden, you're gonna lose a lot of people. So how can I use this information to help me? Well, basically, in this How to Travel the Philippines video, I can see for a fact that people started to tune out around the conclusion of the video, as well as my summary. And at the end of the video, I said, you know, what were my top five places? Is the Philippines safe? Uh, is it expensive? Do you need a visa? And by this point, I was losing quite a few people. A lot of people were losing off, losing interest at this point because they didn't really care. They just wanted to see the more visually pleasing side of the video. So I learned from this and used that in my How to Travel Thailand video. In my How to Travel Thailand video, I actually shortened my exit. And so my conclusion and my summary, I made it a lot shorter so that I could hopefully retain a larger percent of my audience by the end of the video. So one of the great things is I can actually compare videos. So come up to here and where is the comparison? There it is, comparison. So click on the comparison button and let's select how to travel Thailand. Okay, now that we have the comparison all set up, 
Now, keep in mind, it's not exactly an equal comparison because How to Travel the Philippines, first of all, had viral success behind it and it's been up for about an extra month. How to Travel Thailand, on the other hand, was only posted about a week ago. But we can still compare some of the trends and some of the patterns. How to Travel Thailand has an average view duration of 5 minutes and 46 seconds, which is shorter than How to Travel the Philippines, but let's keep in mind that it's relative to the length of the video. So How to Travel Thailand actually has an extra 6% of the video viewed. If you're YouTube, you're actually deciding how successful a video is based on the percentage of view time. So it might have been good that I actually kept my How to Travel Thailand video a little bit shorter to even get that 6% extra audience retention. That will hopefully help YouTube search engine optimize it a little higher than it would have for my Philippines video. Okay, so let's look at demographics. And I'm actually just going to cancel the comparison for this because I don't think it's overly relevant for this part. But if we click on how to travel the Philippines, we can see here that 61% were male plus 40% female. That doesn't add up. I don't know where the extra 1% came from, but let's ignore that. Unsurprisingly, the Philippines was actually the number one viewing country for this video. Number two, United States, Canada, etc. So how is this information helpful? Well, immediately we've learned that when I create a title like How to Travel the Philippines, it interacts better with the locals than it does with foreigners. So for future videos like How to Travel Thailand, well maybe I need to find a way to target Thai people because there's a better chance that they will watch it than anyone else. It can also be said that maybe there's more males who are watching travel videos, so how can I target that demographic? I don't necessarily have the answer, but it's food for thought. Another extremely useful analytical tool is traffic sources. So where are people coming from? How are they actually finding your channel? So scroll down a bit after you click on traffic sources, and you can actually see here that most of my traffic, based on watch time, 41% of views or on watch time minutes are actually coming from suggested videos. The one that I find the most interesting is actually the YouTube search. So what are people searching that is bringing them to my channel? If we click on this, my biggest words are Philippines, Philippines travel, travel, Singapore, GoPro Hero 4, El Nido. And we can see here that by a long shot, the biggest is actually Philippines. Philippines is 13% of my minutes watch, which is huge. So what can I take away from the statistic here? This is basically telling me that any video I create and caption the Philippines or Philippines, Philippines anything is a hot word. It's bringing a lot of traffic back to my page and it might be a great thing to include in future videos. Same can be said with GoPro. Although only 2% is GoPro Hero 4, we can see GoPro session, uh, GoPro Hero 4 session, all these little GoPro words add up to almost 6 or 7%, and that's pretty substantial. So maybe I should make more videos with the title GoPro or, uh, you know, Day with a GoPro in Asia. Just finding ways to incorporate hot words. But something that's interesting and worth noting is that if you click on the Philippines, look at this. The people who are searching the Philippines the most are actually not Filipino. They come in second. Most of my Philippine searches are actually coming from the United States. So it's also good to figure out what are your hot words and who is searching them because this can help you target that audience a little bit better in the future. Another really useful section in YouTube Analytics is the subscribers bar. So come down here, click on subscribers and take a look at where your subscribers are coming from. So for me, I can see here that over the past 28 days, I gained roughly 7,000 and lost about 700. But the most interesting part is come down to video, click on it, and this tab will actually show you which videos are creating you new subscribers. So I can see here my best video is How to Travel the Philippines, and it's created me roughly 380 subscribers over the past 28 days, which is pretty amazing. I'm seeing a trend here, and it's essentially that my highest viewed videos are creating the most subscribers, and that's not going to surprise anyone here. What you might not realize is there might be some genres of videos that you're creating that are actually being much more successful than others. The main reason you should check this out is you just need to have a better understanding of which videos of yours are worth your time. Are you putting your time in the right places and which videos should you create more of? And the very last thing I want to cover with you guys is annotations. And annotations can be an amazing tool to keep audiences engaged in your videos. Now I'm going to be the first to admit I have done a terrible job with annotations and if we look here at my stats, I'm doing very poorly with them. To give you guys an example of what an annotation is, I'll quickly pull up a video. And so this little pop-up was actually added by me after the video was uploaded. And the idea behind it is, 
After someone completes watching your video, you don't want them to leave your channel. You want them to stick around and check out more of your stuff. So adding this annotation hopefully will encourage people to check out another video of yours, assuming they're still around at the 10 minutes and 12 seconds mark, which is a bit of a stretch to expect. Let's go back to analytics and let's actually look at that exact video. Okay, so if we look at the annotation success on Most Beautiful Place in the World, Island Tour El Nido, we can see that success is not a word that should be corresponded with this. I have been far from successful. Just over one tenth of a percent of people have actually clicked on my little pop-up. On the other hand, close to 2% have closed it. So 38 people actually clicked it, 595 people were annoyed and clicked it and said, go away. So I obviously need to ask myself, why is it that it was so unsuccessful? It could be how I worded the pop-up, it could have been the moment that I used it in the video. But also one of the bigger reasons I think it's also a failure is that it's so late in the video. If we see here, I quit my job to travel, click here, that didn't happen till 10 minutes and 4 seconds into the video. That is so, so late in a video. By the last minute of the video, I probably have only 50% or less of the audience left. We can see here that by 10 minutes and 4 seconds, we only have 32% of our audience left. Now, that's still pretty decent when you consider this video gets hundreds of views every day. But for some reason, we're not capitalizing on that pop-up and people aren't clicking on it. Unfortunately, I don't have the answer to that question, but one thing that I will be doing is changing the wording around to see if I can increase the percentage of click-throughs. If you guys made it this far in the video, you obviously liked it, so make sure to hit that big thumbs up, click the subscribe button, and get ready for more videos to come. Thanks for watching, guys.